Hello guys, I had to jump on here. Um, because I've had a very interesting day. I've been accused of all sorts of things <laughs> all over social media today. I've been accused of being uh, blindly pro-Emery, anti-Emery, anti-Arsenal, which was an interesting and surprising one. Um, anti Mesut Ozil. Um pro-Brexit and anti-Brexit. That wasn't it. that was that really threw me. Uh, Islamophobic. That was a new one. Uh, possibly the most upsetting one, but there you go. Uh, so I thought I'd better jump on here and, and um, just try and get down some of my thoughts on the whole sort of Meza Urzel Unai Emery situation because I feel like you know I've waded into it on Twitter uh, and it's difficult to get across full extent of what you actually think the reason I've been talking about on Twitter is because of the tweet he put out tonight I'm going to read it now actually uh, let's have a look he tweeted a picture of himself wearing the captain's armband at the Emirates Stadium uh, along with the phrase when you su start supporting a football club you don't support it because of the trophies or a player or history you support it because you found yourself somewhere there found a place where you belong Hashtag Dennis Burkamp. And my reaction to that was that I felt personally that that was quite an unhelpful thing to do. On a day, probably Unai Emery's most difficult day as Arsenal manager, in the light of that terrible defeat against Barté, which I'm not for a second trying to defend or justify. Um, it's pretty clear to me that Meza Ozil or shall we say, people around Meza Ozil, I doubt he even knows that tweet's going out. Uh, I've looked to capitalise on the unhappiness with the manager that exists um, and rally support around the player and his cause. As he's entitled to do, I don't think it's healthy for the club. Um, I think... Well, what do I think? Let's go right back to the beginning. When Arsenal signed Mesut Ozil, there was not a happier man than me. Honestly, I don't think anybody was a bigger Ozil fan than I was. I was in South Africa watching him take England apart. I was at that game where he raced away from Gareth Barry. One of the most extraordinary individual performances I had ever seen. And I was desperate for Arsenal to get him that summer. And they didn't. He went to Real Madrid. I was gutted. And when the opportunity came up and we got him... I couldn't believe it. It was without doubt, probably remains, the biggest signing of my Arsenal supporting life. Um, to get a player from a club of that calibre, of that quality, was unbelievable. I would say, given how big a fan I was of the player, I would say he's not quite delivered what I expected. Um, I think that's true in the numbers, in terms of if you look at what he produced at Madrid, but I also just think the sort of general quality of his play has not been at that level for the most part. We've seen moments of it, sure. Oh, hell of a goal against Ludogorets. And, th and that's being facetious, to be fair, because like, he's produced a hell of a lot of chances for teammates and some fantastic moments, some good goals himself. But it became clear he was never going to be a Maradona. Or even an Alexis. He wasn't a guy who could single-handedly elevate this team. Um, and that's why he was so brilliant at Madrid. And to an extent with Germany. Because he was surrounded with absolutely top-class players. And no one could supply for them better than him. And at Arsenal, it hasn't been the same. And he hasn't been the same. Um, I think there have been issues with him. I think that, you know too many away games we've seen him look frail seen him not impose himself um, too many big games he's not produced and crucially I think that accommodating him tactically came at a real cost for this team I think playing him as a number 10 left us exposed in the middle of the park uh, I think it meant that we were carrying him at times uh, in terms of his defensive output um, probably ironically I think when we sort of managed to carry him or accommodate him best was when Arsene Wenger played the back three uh, and we had three centre halves and two centre midfielders Ozil was playing the kind of role Mkhitaryan's playing now as a kind of 
inside forward from the right. And uh, we got away with it for the most part. Uh, and he looked okay. Um, so, yeah. But I think, you know, for the most part, I think he, he's he's been good, but not what I thought we were getting. Not at that level. Um, when it came to the situation with his contract last January, I understand, actually, why the club made the decision they did to give him all that money. I don't think it was particularly a good decision, but I understand why we had lost Alexis. We, uh, you know... We probably thought there's a good chance we could lose Arsene. A lot of the identity, a lot of the sort of iconic figures at the club seem to be going. Stars, people would have hurt our credibility to lose all those players. It was a bit like when we gave Theo Walcott a very big deal. Mesut Ozil was a much better footballer than Theo Walcott. But, you know, that was a situation where we'd lost Van Persie and we were over a barrel. And we fell over a barrel here. And we signed up for what we signed up for. Well, Gazidis seems to have done it anyway. And I think, you know, it, it, it's it's too much money for a club with our resources. I think, to be honest, the Mkhitaryan contract is probably as damaging and doesn't get talked about often enough in terms of how much we're paying him for what his residual value is, for what he's able to contribute. I think that's scandalous too, but anyway. Since the new contract came in, and let's not forget as well, at the time it was signed and agreed, Ozil was playing out of his skin. He has not really performed since then. Don't talk about Leicester, that's one game. Consistently, he hasn't really produced. Um, a bit like Walcott, great until the contract and then less great. Remember those Man City games towards the end of last season, the League Cup final... Uh, the home game in the league I mean he was chasing shadows you know we obviously we know all about what went on the summer with Germany and who knows how big an effect that's had on Ozil on his mentality on his confidence um, Emery seemed initially to support him to want him in the team now he doesn't I feel like he gave Ozil the opportunity to play and didn't get what he wanted the response he wanted from him and I think at that point a discussion was had about the salary that we're paying out and if it could be better utilised elsewhere. And it strikes me that the club hierarchy, and by that I mean the coach, Raul, Vinny, uh, maybe even Sven Mislintat before his departure, must have some sort of consensus that it would probably be a good thing to get Unai Emery off the wage bill and reinvest that money elsewhere. I say that because I don't believe that Unai Emery, who's towed the company line in every press conference, who's been uh, you know, an ambassador as much for the club as an, anything else, who's not spoken out of turn when he's been told he can't buy players in January. I don't believe that guy, who's been a bit of a company man, would go against the orders of those above him and ostracise the club's highest paid player in its history. I just don't believe that. I think they're all on the same page. I'm not saying it's an edict from above. I'm not saying they're saying you cannot play us or you should not play him to force him out. But I don't think they're unhappy about what Emery's doing. And I think that there is probably a collective hope that in the summer there will be a parting of the ways. Uh, and I'm inclined to agree that that would probably be a good thing. We desperately need a big rebuild. And I'm not sure Mesut Ozil should be part of that. There are lots of reasons. The first is that he's 31 next season. So, in October, in fact. So whatever happens, he's not really part of the long-term future of this club. The second reason, uh, I would say, is that we've sort of been down the road of having uh, a team with Ozil at its heart. And it hasn't taken us to where we want to go. If anything, it's got us playing sort of a style of football that's been... Uh, moving in a different direction to that the rest of the top six has gone, which has been you know, based on pressing and pace and intensity. Um, and it's meant we've struggled to compete with them, particularly in those games. Uh, so I feel like that's not necessarily the team model we should be adopting. I think there's a sort of bigger thing at play about the death of the number 10. I think if you look across Europe, the classic number 10s are really struggling. I think that Ozil... Ozil's heyday in a tactical sense has been and gone. Um, 
And I think there's the financial thing, you know, for the money that we're paying to him, the money's that tied up in Ozil, we could spend that salary on three players on a hundred and you know, fifteen grand a week. And they would be pretty handy players on that kind of salary. I mean, I imagine someone like Lucas Torreira is probably on quite a lot less than that, probably between 60 and 80 grand. You get five of them, you know? I think that's what the club think, and I think that's what they want to do. And I don't think it's just him, by the way. I don't really see Henrik Mkhitaryan being here much longer either. And I even think there'll be a discussion over people like Aubameyang and Lacazette. You know, whether or not we can afford to have two centre-forwards who are both getting older, who've both got massive salaries. But Ozil's the obvious one to shift out. Now, on to his treatment this season. I do think his treatment this season has been unfair at times. Um, there's no way, whatever you think of Ozil, and I empathise with a coach who thinks maybe he shouldn't be in the starting eleven each week. Certain games, he should be. You know, when he played against Cardiff, for me, that was the right choice. It was the ideal game for him. Uh I think you should always have him on the bench. I know he's not been a great sub in the past, but you never know if you'll be in a match scenario where you need to unlock a defence and who better? Who better? Uh, or if you're against a packed defence, you know, someone defending a lead. He's ideal. And, you know, I, I can't understand having whoever it might be, Nketiah, El Nenny, on the bench ahead of Meza Ozil. I don't agree with it. I think it's crazy. Um... I think it's the club clearly saying we have no what we wish to do is force him to leave to say to Ozil if you want to play football you've got to leave this club um, now to be fair I can see why they're taking that strong stance because everything he says is well I ain't going anywhere now in fairness to him they gave him the contract but him having the contract but not being in favour with the coach or not necessarily being a big part of the team going forward is an unhealthy situation. So my desire would be to see him go. Um, I don't agree with the idea that Arsenal should play him to increase his market value. I don't think that's really a thing. I kind of don't think he has any market value. And I say that not because he's not a good player, but because his salary is so high, um, disproportionately high, that I think in taking on that salary there's almost no chance of you receiving a transfer fee from a buying club. Maybe there would be like a negligible fee. I don't know, 10 million, maybe. I would be personally quite surprised. I think more likely is you get a sort of loan arrangement where, you know, it's like a two-year loan and they sort of take over a salary, but there's no fee attached, something like that. Um, I would have him on the bench, though. I, I don't think Barté is a good example because I do think genuinely there were sort of fitness concerns. He'd been ill. He'd had one day back in training. I can understand not taking him to a freezing cold uh, match on the other side of Europe. Um, anyway, on to Ozil's social media post tonight. I would say that neither Arsenal, Emery nor Ozil have handled this, in my opinion, particularly well. Um... I think Arsenal, Emery has dodged the question on Ozil a few times. I think if he'd spoken with more clarity, I think if he told the truth that this is a financial decision as much as anything else, I think he probably would have garnered more support. I think people would be more content about the idea of losing Ozil if they felt like, well, it might mean players coming in in the summer. Um, the reason Ozil's post irritates me, and like I say, it may not be his responsibility, it may be that of his management team, it loads tension, pressure uh, onto the coach. And I think that's really unhealthy. I think people say they want to give plat a platform for the new coach to succeed. Certainly that's what they said when Emery was appointed. Uh, and here he is kind of being undermined, I think, by his own players, which I don't think is cool. You know, I'm sure Mesut Ozil likes Arsenal. I quite like Mesut Ozil. I'm sure he's a lovely guy. And he's, he can be great at football, but I just don't think he's sort of the right guy for our future. And I think that he knows, not he, whoever's tweeting on his behalf, knows full well what a tweet like that will do. Um, and the thing is, you know, the gamble is that he's going to try and outlast uh, Emery, maybe. And maybe the new manager coming in will support him. Well, I think there's no guarantee of that. 
at all. You know, whatever happens, Ozil's not for the long term. 31 in January. This is not like Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba is 25 years old, right? He is the future of Manchester United. And you can bet your bottom dollar they would not have been prepared to shift on that because he's got five years minimum left at the top level. Ozil does not. And, uh, yeah, I think, you know, when you think that even Arsene Wenger had trouble at times accommodating Ozil, there were games where he left him out towards the end of his reign. Any manager more pragmatic than Wenger might have those problems too. You know, in the summer, people, I said this on the last video, maybe wanted Allegri or maybe wanted Simeone. Can you see them playing Ozil? I'm not so sure. Even Mikel Arteta. I don't think there's any guarantee if Mikel Arteta was the Arsenal manager now or next season that Mesut Ozil would be an automatic pick and that he wouldn't rather redistribute those funds. I do feel for Mesut Ozil because he's had a really horrible year. What happened in the World Cup was unpleasant. What's happening at Arsenal for him must be a nightmare. I sympathise with him. But I would say to him, if you want to play football, go. Play. Somewhere else. That, that door is open, clearly. The Arsenal hierarchy couldn't make that more clear. Um, if that's what this is really about, playing football, the opportunities will surely be there for him. And I think he should be involved between now and the end of the season. I don't think he should play every game. Certainly away games, I think it can be an issue. Certainly against stronger opposition, but there are games where I think he really could be useful. Probably the second leg of Barte would be pretty useful, to be honest with you. Um, but I think this relationship, this whole thing has become toxic and broken. This is too long for a YouTube video, but if you've watched this far, I appreciate it. I hope you appreciate my attempt to add some nuance to my position. Cheers, guys. Uh, we all have Arsenal, don't we? It's just a bit of a weird time. Bye.